It's an incredible scientific breakthrough. You know, we, we, there's been a lot of discouragement around vaccines, and we actually had a vaccine trial in which there was even some question if people got harmed from the vaccine or, or if the vaccine exacerbated their, their risk, their biological risk. So to actually have a trial that's proven efficacious. So we're going from zero to 31, which is an incredible leap onto itself. But it's also important to realize that something like a vaccine is still many years off and that we, what we need to do all over the world to deal with the global epidemic as well as our own domestic epidemic is to keep focused on existing effective prevention tools like condoms, like campaigns that educate people, like getting access to testing and getting people who are positive into care. Those are our primary tools and they work. You know, there's been a vigorous dialogue between kind of the public health community and the scientific community about whether or not continued investments in vaccine development were worthwhile when we have all these things that we know that work that are not up to scale, that the money going from vaccine development should go into known proven uh, strategies. So this, I, I think it, this puts an end to that conversation. And, and again, as I said, it's, a, it's very encouraging that we have this breakthrough and I think reestablishes the rationale for substantial government investment in vaccine development. We need to be very clear that this is a scientific breakthrough that is still many, many, many years off from being something that we can use in humans and to emphasize that we do have very effective tools that we know how to use well to prevent new HIV infections and to keep the focus on those and to remind people that they need to engage in safe behavior and protect themselves and others.